Now, did you know there are a number of common plants and herbs which can be grown in a standard garden but used for medicinal purposes? Uh, joining me now to discuss the cultivation, the maintenance and preparation of these plants is Rachel Doyle, Managing Director of the Arboretum Garden Centre in Carlow and President of the International Gardening Centre Association. Uh, Rachel, good morning and welcome. Thank you, Pat. People, Delighted to be here. People may have questions for you. If so, they can uh, text us on 53106 at a cost of 30 cents or local 1894 Five three one zero six. Now, most of these are outdoors, but there is one indoor plant you've brought with you. Which is that? The, this is the aloe vera, which is an absolutely amazing plant. Every household should have one, and I really mean that because the the the, the benefits of having an aloe vera is incredible. Now, people will have known aloe vera from, say, uh, after sun creams and things like that. Yes, contains aloe vera. It contains aloe vera, and with the plant, I suffer from psoriasis, and it's really good. You just cut a little slice and rub it on yeah. for eczema, for any sort of burns, scratches. Um, cuts, bruises, anything like so that. So it really is a miracle plant. It's a miracle plant and I actually had I pr- years ago I was on holidays and my husband, do you know how Irish men don't are not as good as women for putting on the sun creams uh-huh. and he got really really badly burnt on his legs and his feet and, and I went out to the garden where we were staying um, and in Gran Canaria and cut the aloe vera and brought it in and it's a miracle. It's it sorted out the burn. Absolutely incredible. So that's that's a must for every household. And in Grand Canary, of course, it grew outdoors. It grew, no, yes, no bother yes, no, no bother. How hard is it to look after if you it, have it as an indoor potted it plant? It is absolutely foolproof. All the, the the secret to all indoor plants is to actually not to overwater them, and that's the most common cause of them dying. Aloe vera does it likes getting water and then letting it dry out completely and then watering it again. So you drench it. And, and allow and it to dry out, light. drench it again. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it, it grows. I have one growing in a conservatory and it grows and it flowers and it's beautiful. Pink flower. All right. So that that is something that every home should have. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, you've though. also brought a selection of uh, other plants and they're very aromatic because I'm being assailed <laughs> by the, the scents of, of these. We we'll go yeah. through, um, first of all, marigolds. Marigolds. Tell me about marigolds. What are they useful for? Yeah, um, the, well, the, the, the marigolds, the French and the African marigolds that we know, of, that we, as we know of them, are, are great for keeping away green fly. But the candidula, it, it's one that you can use and, as portions to put on the skin. And it's a really pretty flower and it has huge properties. And it's using, again, it's used in creams, lots of creams. Acne. Acne is it's a great one for acne, mm. and and it's also for mouth ulcers. Now, how would you prepare something that you'd use for mouth ulcers from marigolds? It, it's made into a tea, and it, then you gargle with it for mouth. And do you ulcer. have to make sure you have the right marigold for this one? Yes, it's the candidula, which is uh, uh, it's a big uh, it's 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 not like it's not as like the marigolds that we know as French and African. It's a little bit different, but it's it's, it's always available from now on. And it's an, an annual that grows outside. And it grows outside. And it's it's very pretty yellow and orange flower on it. Now tell me about garlic because for years and years and years we thought you could only get garlic in France. <laughs> we oh, didn't realise how easy it is to grow. Yeah, no, garlic, you just p- actually pull off one clove and plant it now and, a, and you'll have garlic. So it's as easy to grow as that. But garlic is one of the most amazing. This This is what it looks like here, Pat. As when it's growing as a little plant. It's just like um, a scallion. I like a scallion. And it has so many properties. It's an, anti, an antioxidant. It's an antibacterial. Uh, it has, it is just... Um, it's supposed to um, reduce your cholesterol. Re- yeah. yeah, reduce cholesterol, re- reduces blood pressure. Ha- it, it is just an amazing plant. Um, uh, I Again, I, I use it because uh, mosquitoes love me. And when I go away, I was one of the things that were going on holidays was the fact that I was eaten alive with mosquitoes. So I r- realised that if you take garlic for a month before you go on vitamin B, the mosquitoes don't like it anymore. So it's really... Nobody uh, likes it. <laughs> no, no, vampires no. It keeps away vampires as well. Yeah. But it's for, for colds, for flus, for everything, 
garlic is just is just now, the most. Do, do you cook a lot, Rachel? Yes, yes. Okay, so I, you, you I, know, nearly, I love cooking as much as I love gardening. And what happens to garlic in the cooking? I mean, if you were to eat raw garlic, it's quite pungent. Yes. But then when you cook it, it sweetens up. Absolutely. And do you know what? It's lovely roasted as well. Just put the whole but the clove of garlic that you buy it in the in the shop, and just put it in with your with your roast vegetables, and, and, and it's does it still retain its medicinal properties oh, yes. in the uh, cooking? Uh, absolutely, yes, All absolutely. Right. Now again, growing this a clove of garlic in the ground, yeah. and it'll grow. And it'll grow. And, and you know, in, in in the few months that it's in the ground, and when you pull it, it's actually much more. Uh, pungent and much more you, you need less of it where you'd normally use maybe three cloves that you'd point from the from when you buy it in the in this supermarket you don't use one clove because, because it's, it's really, retaining really all retaining its oils all, and yeah everything. and it's it's absolutely fantastic now sage uh, what medicinal purpose has sage well, first of all, one of the other things I, I use all these things when I use it and, and I can swear by it because it works it's it's great for women with hot flushes. And that's one of the one of the things about sage. And um, how, how is it prepared uh, for for use in that way? Well, I, I would use it in in everything I cook. I can. I even would go out and pull sage and I herbs like that. You should have grown at the back door. You shouldn't have to walk down the garden and yeah. you won't use them. Uh, and sli- you know, get your your scissors that you use for your cutting your herbs and s- slice it up and put it into salads. So you're eating it in this absu- absolute natural state, which is which is really one good thing. But the other things it's used for is coughs, for colds, for hoarseness, for uh, for uh, for memory, for improving the memory. So again, sage, and there, it's a lovely shrub. It doesn't have to be grown in the herb garden because the the normal sage. But you can get the purple sage, which is a lovely clump forming shrub, uh, and you can get the, the the variegated one, which will look very nice in the front of your herbaceous border. So it doesn't have to be separate away. It has a beauty all of its own. Uh, oh, absolutely. It, it, and and for for rubbing it, say on a cold sore, you just take a leaf of the a plant leaf, and, a leaf and, and, and rub, rub it. it on. Rub it. The very same as when we were kids and you fell into nettles in the countryside and you got docks to and, and you rubbed it on. You know that was another yeah. no an old fashioned cure. And, and we all knew it worked. Absolutely. Yes. And, and yet, you know, this science didn't embrace these kind of things yes. that everybody knew weren't. Yeah. Now, um, chamomile. Yes, chamomile. Well, I've heard of chamomile tea, but... Yeah. Chamomile, actually, in Buckingham Palace, or our president might be might be walking on it tomorrow. There's actually a chamomile lawn in Buckingham Palace. Um, and as you walk across it, does it then, it gives, because you disturb it, 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 it yes, gives, it gives off the aroma. Uh, yeah. And it's it's very hardy as a lawn. As there's absolutely no no problem to it. But f- the other thing you can use it for is bites and stings, and. Uh, uh, skin all types of skin irritations, but chamomile, I suppose, as a tea for for colds, chamomile with uh, cider vinegar and lemon juice is a really great deterrent for colds and flus in the winter time. And uh, it has relaxing qualities. And Absolutely, because uh, I mean that's, that's how you, that's you see why, it advertised. Sure, and that's why so many people would use it as a, you know a, a chamomile tea before, before go to, going to bed. Go, yeah. Um, promoting healing then do you make it up into a poultice or what way would you use yes, it yes you can make it into a poultice or you can use the, tea, the, the, the like the tea bag the chamomile bag uh, and, and use it in, in, in that way on cold sores now eucalyptus um, you think of eucalyptus as being a very foreign kind of a plant yes it's, it's a native of Australia and actually when it gets to 34 degrees uh, it, it combusts and, it, and that's how some of the forest fires create, are created in places like Australia. Really? Right, yeah. 34 degrees and, and it up just, it goes. It just, yeah, it can, it can combust. Because I was there twice in the last two years and, and went out to see where some of those horrific fires were. Um, but I presume then it just grows back even oh, more it, abundantly. Oh, absolutely. And, and it's part of, of nature and of, of some of the plants needing that heat and that burning for to break their dormancy. And it's amazing to see yeah. some, of, some of the plants and how quickly Because I've seen things like Tasmanian ferns and yes. if they combust as well, should they come back? Yeah. I, you think yeah. this is a tragedy. There's a yeah. landscape and all the ferns yeah. are gone. Yeah. And within yeah. a short time, they're back. Yeah, I, I was amazing that two years from one of the places we were brought brought to last year, since since it was completely gutted with fire, and how it had rejuvenated itself. 
amazing. But eucalyptus is a great plant. It's a lovely, it's it's here for the last hundred years. There's a really nice um, plot of eucalyptus in Kennedy Park in Wexford. And um, it's it's uh, uh, one of these plants that you, one of these fragrances that you, you know, you can, um, that I, I always have it in my back hall. In uh, I brought this eucalyptus, the the eucalyptus wood is beautiful as well. Yeah. And uh, it's... But that smell of eucalyptus oil that people yes. would be very familiar with. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of a clean smell, isn't it? It it's is, a, yeah, 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 yes. And it's, it's, I suppose, yeah, it gives off the antibiotic mm. sort of smell. And it's therapeutic uses then um, for eucalyptus? For respiratory, respiratory, uh, and it's made into a tea for all for to clear the respiratory system. Yeah, and you have some advice. Don't make it in a metal teapot. No, because make you'll it in have ceramic. A, yes, because you'll it'll be you'll have a tanning taste in your in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, that, right. that, that lovely. That you brought a whole selection of plants here, and there's yeah. one, and I knew I recognised the leaf, and I thought it was a lemon tree, but in fact it's a blackberry. It's a blackberry, and that's the that's the evergreen. Thornless blackberry because we always associate blackberries as being full of thorns. It's absolutely abundance of vitamin C and vitamin K. It's uh, um, a, a muscle relaxer. It's uh, um, blackberries. So, so blackberries um, that we could pick on the roadside, yeah. for example, they have all these qualities. Oh, that absolutely fantastic! And and the roots used to be washed and used for as a wash for wounds uh, in 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 bygone days, um, but uh, it's it treats lots of different skin irritations when when the roots are. It's mind you, it's mm. hard to dig it out. It's a dreadful thing to dig out, but also blackberries are great for making us more alert and brain alert. It's called. For for the e- when you're using blackberries, or and you, you you wonder um, uh, about you know something like this. I know from brambles which carry blackberries, wild brambles. Yeah. they spread Sp- so quickly. Now, well, yeah. this fellow here, he, he's he's more no, civilized. He's, one. He's, he's he's civilized, and it's ev- the fact that it's evergreen and thornless has made it really good. And blueberries, then of course, are another really. A really amazing plant. All right. Uh, I'll tell you what, we'll pause. Yeah. We've uh, lots more to talk about, but we'll take a quick break. Now, I'm here with Rachel Doyle of the Arboretum, and we're looking at plants which have a medicinal uh, quality. Um, rosemary, what does rosemary do for you? Rosemary, uh, first of all, it's an amazing plant. The normally rosemary officinal, which, which grows to about five foot high and that can be used for many things. But uh, in recent research shows that they found uh, carnosia acid in rosemary, which is what uh, uh, is being used now. They believe that it's going to be a revelation in Alzheimer's, the treatment of Alzheimer's. So that's fantastic. But just back to the different types of rosemary, there's one prostrata, which, as the name says, it grows along the ground, crawls down over walls, and it's fantastic. And then Mrs. Jessup is a real architectural one. So, but so medicinally, they're med- they're all the same, are they? Medicinally, they're all the same. Yeah, and I I suppose you know again. Uh, when my two sons were doing exams, I always use it because it really is the brain, the brain uh, uh, herb, and it's supposed to stimulate the brain and keep you alert. So, we've a few more plants here. Tea tree, tea tree is Leptospermum. It's that lovely feathery plant, uh, and Leptospermum tea tree is the tea tree oil that we use as an antiseptic. It's an antibacterial. It's just one of these amazing products that you can use for so many things, from everything from farukas to, to, you know, across the board. And um, the tea tree, the the wood is used for, uh, sawdust is actually used to uh, give flavour to fish and meat. But the tea tree is always is also the, the manuka honey is the bees feed on the on the tea tree in New Zealand and that's where you get the pure manuka honey and like we all know the manuka honey has such amazing properties for mm. healing and I mean f- just for yeah. about I think ho- honey generally I mean honey uh, yes manuka uh, obviously is a, a particular kind but <clears throat> honey is supposed to be great and if you eat local honey it seems it's better for local ailments. So they yes. say. <laughs> yeah, but but that that that's back to working with nature. Working with nature. One that has a kind of an ominous sound to it is digitalis. Yeah, digitalis is the old is the name for the lady fingers that we all remember when we were going to school. And that is 
that's a, an amazing little plant. It's used for the treatment of heart conditions. It's used in a lot of medicines. All of those plants are used in, in, in everyday medicines. Yeah. And it's important not, not to ever treat yourself uh, to get a doctor's advice. Some advice on this. Yeah. Uh, in terms of making up things like tea tree oil from the tea tree plant, what do you do? I mean, how do you make the oil? Do you just have to squash the plant? or? Yeah, I... I, I they get a press of yeah, some yeah. And, and I have never done that I've never actually made a tea tree oil I always buy it in the little jars yeah. the so little you just bottle. like to have the plant yeah. around yes I like to have the plant around because I think it's, it's, it, it gives off a lovely aroma and it's pretty flowers so yeah. it's a really nice plant for the garden um, Parsley now, does parsley have particular medicinal problems? Yeah, it's properties? great. It's 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 great for digestion, and it's great for for fresh breath. Uh, so, I I believe that everyone should have parsley growing at the back door when you're. Yeah. When they you say it's an antidote to if you've been eating garlic and yes. you want to get rid of yes. the garlic smell. Yes, uh, and, and it's, ba- it's back to it being freshening your mouth and your breath, and it's great. All right. Um, well, so many plants and, and we have to remember, of course, that science and the uh, pharmaceutical companies have looked to Mother Nature uh, for many of their breakthroughs. So this is not hocum, hocus pocus. Uh, this is... Oh, no, this is the real thing. And that's why it's isn't it wonderful to sit, think that, you know, for Alzheimer's, there's sage is being researched and so is rosemary, two of our very popular plants that most people would have them, one or, or both of them in the garden. And uh, I, I, I mean, it's one of these diseases that I think is horrific. So I'd love to see a breakthrough on that. Now, I have to talk to you about the Arboretum because it is the most fabulous garden centre. It's won multiple uh, prizes. But uh, you were bypassed by the main uh, Dublin, Kilkenny, Waterford motorway. And we feared for you. How has it turned out? It's turned out great. The, I mean, was, I was absolutely devastated in the beginning because everybody going from Waterford to Dublin seemed to not need to go to the loo and have their breakfast anymore. But now they've, they've all come back, which is wonderful. But we, we decided, uh, my two sons, Fergal and Barry, are very involved in the, in the... And I remember going down to the to the restaurant one day and saying, "How? what can we do to get the people to come back? So we revamped. Uh, that's two years ago we spent 750,000 on the revamp and it's worked and we've just now revamped the whole place again the shop and uh, covered the whole outdoor area so we spent 2 million so it's so business is doing okay and we are fighting the motorway and people are coming back and so you're surviving well we're surviving well and everyone knows now that exit 6 is the easiest one to get to us <laughs> and it's great because people just people just come in their droves people were complaining to me yesterday that they couldn't park and they were waiting for 10 minutes and 15 minutes to get up a car parking space so, so that's success so that's that's down the country <laughs> very good. Rachel Doyle of the Arboretum, thank you very much for joining us on Thanks. the programme today.